Um, will you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance for the gentleman who covered? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Charisse is Texas. She's not here. Roll call.
and everything else, uh, and drive from, you know, we live south of NASA, drive out there, the costs of, of making that town have been the same, and now we're just looking for a better place to be able to make that spread a little bit different for us, to our advantage. So, in order to get the better price per pound, we are now going underneath lights. And the power that we put in on the farm costs us $17,000 to bring power in. And we can't upgrade it to three-phase. So we are maximized uh, or, or limited at only growing under 130 lights right now. So we're only able to grow about 138 plants at one given time all year round. So, you know, the very beginning we were growing greenhouse. You know, these things were covered with uh, polycarbonate. And, uh, you know, we did pretty well. Now, in order to get the price that we want, about fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars a pound, we're growing under lights, and um, so that's that's number two. What we've already done is, and you can pass them around and pop them open if you want to. The one with the white top is the most sought after uh, sour diesel, and the one with the white is the cookies. One of the advantages is that we have, because we started in 2014, is we were able to now make those connections with the seed purchasers before the system uh, constricted around where the strains were at and what could be introduced into Colorado. So at the beginning of 2015, in March of 2015, you couldn't bring strains from California anymore. It got completely uh, capped. You couldn't bring in another strain. So all the strains in the system right now are really kind of watered down, and we have the advantage of what we found in 2014. We have a very uh, good friend, that another grower, another grower that has kept the strain for us. So these strains, when we went out, we paid quite a bit of money for these two. Um, and the sour diesel is something that we've been able to sell for two thousand dollars a pound still because it's so desirable. So you know, we know what business model we have. We know what we're able to do, but we know what's restricting us, and that is the access to employees and the access to three-phase power. Um, you know, we're actively looking for a place to buy or a piece of land to buy here in the city, and uh, what we would like to do is either move our existing license into the city limits so that we could operate here under that license. And, you know, we've got a great rapport with the Department of Revenue and our one uh, division. Uh, we've been one of their first customers. You know, Crystal was going in there to get a badge when she was pregnant, so they took a lot of liberty to us and helped us out a lot. But one of the things that, that we've been able to build on is build on that relationship. So there's a lot of trust, and we've already reached out to them. In order for us to move, there's a lot of things that kind of have to fall into place. Fully aware of moratoriums and, and what they're ability is to move them or not under the uh, state statutes. But what we don't want to do is, is ask for something that we can't, can't get. So, you know, we've reached out to Aaron and we've reached out to other individuals in the community that hold these licenses. Um, but that's where we're at. You know, what we have is, is, is a good business that we're looking for is a place like here where we can really go uh, go out. And I don't know if you guys have any questions or your question, Mr. Pacheco. So what you're looking for is place here to to the grow house. Yes. And we can get the power to you. What we've been able to do, because it's so cold at night here during the summer, is we've completely cut out all of our air conditioning. We've gone through three years of growing in a in greenhouses and we had to cool them. We always had to run swamp schools and everything else. This last year we grew indoor. And just by putting the lids on those greenhouses and, and covering them 100% and insulating them, um, we saw pretty quickly how we were supposed to grow. And it's a great environment to grow with lights. You don't need any air conditioning. You don't need any dehumidifiers. And every piece of that three-phase power that you're purchasing is going to be growing. So nowhere else in the state does anybody have a night as cold as us other than in Durango. But the Durango's uh, you know, licenses are capped already. And it's too far for us. We don't want to drive over there. Do you have a place in mind? Or? We do. We do. We've been looking at the piece of uh, property across the street from the freeway. 
Um, but we've also been talking to some property owners and checking to see if they'd be willing to sell behind the old Salazar piece right next to the uh, Penea. So, you know, we're just, we're just looking for a very close to them. Well, I will reach out to the three current license holders, okay. and uh, if they're okay with me sharing information, I have their number, okay. and I have all their numbers, and if they're okay, I've already reached out to one of them, so you have been in contact, I'll reach out to the other two, and if they're interested, uh, I'll give them your numbers, and okay? Yeah. Our renewal for this event isn't until the, uh, it isn't until July 27th, 2018, so we have a valid license until then. What we would like to do is use this time between now and then to use our good reputation in order to either one, transfer the license because then we can operate as soon as the building's built, or two, work with the local <coughs> uh, existing license and come in and purchase one of the operator's licenses. And uh, as far as we understand, we can probably get one of those operator's licenses within 30 days. So, I mean, that'd be a great opportunity for us, but ultimately, you know, we got into this business to be owners, and we would like to remain so. How far do you have to be from the next closest road? There is no limit. So there's no danger at all? Um, well, we're indoors, so I mean, even though... <coughs> Aren't you leaving the roof open, though? No. Oh, okay. I'm no, sorry. it's completely enclosed, and then what we have is, is uh, multiple intakes at the bottom, and they do have carbon filters on both sides. The inside... I misunderstood. Did you open the roof at night? No. Okay. No, we just run the air at night so that we suck in the cool air. Gotcha. Yeah. How many people do you employ? So for each greenhouse, which is 2,500 square feet, it takes about three guys to work that, and you end up with six harvests a year. So for each greenhouse, uh, I mean, you could you could probably you know cross train a couple people, but if we were able to build the same size that we had in San Luis, we would be around 15 people. And it's just that that's that's different. You know what we've done is we've spent our time learning how to grow and hiring the best growers and finding the best strains, and other people have just been chasing the quick buck, and uh, that's not sustainable in a lot of senses. So I think that we've done what's right. For us, anyway. Thank you. Any other questions? Are you basically looking to go from the ground up? Is that, is that your intention? That'd be nice. Would I like to build? They're just looking for a license. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there was local licenses available, we'd be coming in and asking to apply and then go through that process to transfer. All of those are kind of administrative uh, things to do. So. And the other option would be to look at expanding our organization to include one more last one. Um, that would be the biggest box. Basically. If that's the Pandora's box you want to open, maybe. One thing that it did with San Luis, because they ended up with a moratorium uh, at the end of uh, 2016, um, was they had, uh, I think, a total of seven licenses, and there was only five operational, and ours is one of them. But we wanted to get a second growth because we wanted to do it in a different location already. So we went and we talked to them this year to see if we could we could move either this license to a different spot in Christie County. And they said that in order for us to move, they were they were willing to lift the moratorium specifically for us to move. Or we could start all over again with a new application. And all that means is the difference of money between thirty six hundred bucks and five grand, it's it's only eighteen hundred dollar difference for us in the end after the licensing fees. For the, for the owners. But what, um, you know, we did get that approval from the board. Um, so I know that there's been ways to do it, but um, we worked with Ed Novaka over there and then we worked with Matt Hobbs here. So, there you go. Anything else? Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, thank you guys. Tom, you're up. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm Monica. I am the director for the Public uh, Development Center uh, here in Valley. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the SBDC. Here in the Valley. For the Small Business Development Center, we're funded federally by the SBA. 
and then locally by uh, counties and municipalities here in the Valley. We cover all six counties. Um, we provide no-cost small business assistance um, to anybody who needs it. So we do everything from business planning to expansion, uh, acquisition, uh, helping with funding, uh, helping people develop, uh, you know, find capital. Um, but we also uh, really want to work very much with the towns in the county. Uh, and so one of the things I think is we're, we're a value organization, but I think we've been very much perceived as an Alamosa-centric organization, because that's where our, our office is. Um, we're trying to change that narrative. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we are accessible to uh, the small businesses in the communities that, they, that they're in. Um, and that we're also sensitive to what it is that those communities need. And that's the, that's the key, that's why I'm here, is to make sure that you guys know who we are. Um, so that if you come across a small business that needs help, um, or you know, even for us to understand what it is that you as a town, where, what direction you want to go, what types of businesses you want to see, what types of businesses you don't want to see. So that when we come across those businesses, we can put them in the right location. You know, we don't do economic development. You know, we're not going to go out and solicit businesses and try to put them in places. But when businesses come to us and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting a hardware store, I'm going to like, oh, we should look at Del Norte because Del Norte wants a hardware store. Um, you know, so that's, that's really important for us to understand because every community in the Valley is 100% different than every other community. Um, and that's the thing that we're learning really quickly. Um, we try to spend at least one day every month in every community. When I'm back in <coughs> Nito, I usually camp out at the uh, Heritage Museum. Um, and so we try to be here one day a month so that businesses don't have to travel to Alamosa. Especially if you've got a small business and you're running a business, like I only got time to go. So we will make time to come to you. Um, the other thing we're doing that's uh, really new this year is we're doing uh, a lot more educational programming. So I'm new to the position, I'm here since June, um, and we just unveiled this last week. Uh, Aaron was kind enough to come to the event that we had uh, in uh, Alamosa where we unveiled uh, our programming. But we're doing a lot of different educational programming across the valley. Um, some of it is specifically agriculture focused. We're doing that in, in uh, partnership with uh, Trinidad State Junior College. We're doing an evening workshop series with Out of State. Uh, we're doing a series of power luncheons uh, across the valley. Uh, we're doing our Leading Edge program, which is a basically a 12-week program tailored to anybody who wants to start a business. Um, it takes you through the entire process. So that, that program has a cost associated with about $300, but we've already got a number of uh, lending institutions. Um, I know that the Development Resources Group is going to uh, sponsor scholarships. I think first off, what the bank has said that they'll sponsor scholarships, and then I just found out today that REC and Cielo is also going to sponsor scholarships. So if you know of small businesses that can use that program, there's money available to underwrite those. Because we don't want that to be the barrier for people getting the help that they need. Um, so we just want to make sure you guys are aware of us, um, that, that we are a resource. Um, we want to be a part of the community. Uh, we want to be here as much as we need to be here to support the small business and the economic development um, in Antonio. Um, so that's basically why I'm here. Um, any questions? Just as a quick heads up, I, uh, Tom got here early. He was the second one, third, if you kind of lost him this year already. But anyway, uh, we spoke earlier, and you'll notice on June 5th, they're going to be in Alcamita. And uh, no strings attached, but if you want to use this building, let us know. Awesome, or for your monthly meetings, if you need to use this facility. Also, oh, that's great. I appreciate that. No, the, the museum's great. I mean, use that if you, if you Yeah, you know, we, we want to try to go places that, um, you know, it's easily accessible for people. And um, but then also we'll also a lot of times we'll come to a specific business. If someone's like, hey, you know, I need help, I'm like, hey, you know, I'll make the trip down there. Um, it's not a problem for us. We're uh, you know we're willing to travel in order to um, do what we need to do to help the small businesses in the community. Um, but we want you specifically to know that we're a resource uh, because you're the people that are going to most interact with the small business community, so that you can make sure that they're aware of us. Um, there's no cost. Uh, we're completely subsidized. So uh, for a small business that needs help from us, there's no cost associated for that. Um, you know, so. Yeah. Any questions for Mr. Michael? Yeah. I have his contact information. Obviously, he's given it to us as well. So if anybody needs it, uh, reach out to me and or the board members. And, uh, we'll get in touch with you. Awesome. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <coughs> All right, moving on. Uh, 
7B, discussion action on public hearing for liquor license renewal for the Dutch Mill Tavern. Uh, everything in order, She's not here, but has anybody here any problems or issues? Okay. Well, I'm going to open up the public hearing at 5.50 on December 13th. Anybody wish to speak in favor of or in opposition to the liquor uh, license renewal for Dutchmill Tavern? Hey, Chief? Is Chief available? He's in the restroom. Uh, Sarge, Sergeant, has there been any complaints about uh, Dutchville Tavern or anything that we need to be concerned with as a board or community? Um, no, every time we do bar checks or if they have dances and stuff, they've always been real cooperative. So yeah, other than a couple of calls that we've had, but nothing really to complain about. Okay. Yeah. Is there any questions for us? Um, questions for the PD? <coughs> All right, well then, that lasted all of one minute, so I'm going to close the public hearing at 5.51. And um, any discussion from the board? I will entertain a motion to either renew or not renew the Dutch Mill Tavern's license. Motion to renew. I'll second that. All right. Okay, moving along. 7C, discussion action on renewal uh, of license for Colorado Creative Cloud. Is this one a public hearing as well, Stephanie? Uh, no, no. So, no. Sarah, are you speaking on behalf of Creative Cloud? No, I'm just in case there's questions. Uh, well, if there's questions, yeah, I can answer them. Um, so, Chief, any, uh, any issues with Colorado Creative Cloud? In their uh, renewal license? No, we have no issue. In their, is it an order of step? Yes. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, hearing none, I will entertain a motion to either renew or not renew the Marijuana Club license for Creative Cloud, Colorado Creative Cloud. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We are on to 7D, discussion action on special review for pronounced clean water regarding the variance setback. Uh, so Mr. Rosenberg and Mr. Trujillo are present. And Mr. Rosenberg gave us a handout a little earlier. That's right. So essentially on the handout, it shows the changes to the design layout. Uh, indicated by the yellow highlighter for the lilac hedge, and then the red lines and text box for uh, specifically what we're talking about, the variance. So we would essentially just be changing the size of the greenhouses um, to be 15 feet instead of 18 feet wide, and uh, that would also moving the, uh, the buildings forward some on the uh, north end of the property. Moving them south, correct? Yes, moving them south. So essentially we're going to have a five foot perimeter between the fence and any of the structures um, that would uh, make it accessible for fire code uh, requirements. And this was uh, developed after a meeting we had with uh, Rossi and Stephanie and the architect. Sophia Marquez, um, and we Stephanie put forward a, a lot of the uh, work to do the variance um, application and all of that, and so we just wanted to go through the proper protocol to do <coughs> the variance so that we can have that five foot rather than a, a 25 foot space from the uh, fence line. And then the removal of the lilac edge, is that just so people will be able to see it when they get to the corner, or is that... Well, there, there, there was, I guess, some confusion when Sophia did the design, and so the lilac edge she placed on the, the outside of the fence line. And so when we clarified that in the meeting, um, we decided that rather than trying to fit it in between and make the buildings even smaller, to just remove the lilac edge altogether. 
And also, there were some concerns um, from Mr. Duran about the potential of the, the roots affecting the plumbing. And so we wanted to uh, respect that and also not um, have that as a risk in the future. Would you guys consider climbing vines? Is that something that's more? I just like the idea of it being surrounded by something else. We discussed that and all that Rossi kind of. There were some options on the type of uh, vines or what they're fencing mm -hmm. that we could put on there, but um, that, that we could just be set on that later. Yeah, and what, what we're really looking at is to be, have the fire code yeah. established. So we had, what do we have, two <coughs> setbacks is what, what it looked like. And because we're going to be building along the perimeter, we encouraged the three foot, so we took the three feet from the side. So that's what this is pretty much about, is that the fact that there has to be 20 foot setbacks by code, by building code with the permitting process. So we're, we, we want the original design, but we're moving it in, essentially. Any questions for Abe or Mike? I will entertain a motion to approve the variance as presented. <coughs> Scott was the motion, correct? Sure. Oh. You moved, so we got that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Beautiful. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. What are you guys breaking down? Uh, looks like maybe next spring. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're trying to kind of try and do foundation in April. Yeah. All right, we're on to 70 discussion action of public hearing for the 2019 budget approval. I'm going to open the public hearing at 5:56 p.m. Anybody wish to speak to the 2019 budget? Going once, twice. Another one minute public hearing, 557 p.m. closing the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? Then I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution R18-12 budget. Discussion on item E2, resolution R18 13. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution R18 13, the appropriation of sums of money. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution R18-14 for the setting of mill levies. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Okay. Dr. Martinez, yes. you wish to speak or? Fair enough. Alright, we're on to page A, the discussion action on the South Carolina School District Resolution R18-11, which has to do with uh, their annexation request. Do we need a public hearing now? Yeah. So I will open that public hearing at 6 p.m. Thursday, December 13th. Does anybody wish to speak for or against the annexation of South Carolina School District and their parcel of land? being annexed into the town of Montanita. These are really silent. No, 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 no. Well, I was, I, when we get to the discussion, I'm going to, um, so fast forward a little bit. We, I, I'm going to recommend that we not vote tonight because their attorney and our attorney have yet to actually find a time that's mutually uh, beneficial for both of them to meet. Uh, they need to work over the proposal that Dr. Martinez brought to us last month with the state statute. What was it, Matt? Do you remember? But the one something we, entitled yeah. 24 yeah. or 22. It was 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they, they wanted to negotiate on the MOU. They also wanted to introduce that state statute. And uh, their attorney and our attorney haven't spoken yet. So I wanted to open it up to public hearing to see what the public sentiment was. And then either take a vote in January at the regular meeting or propose a special meeting so we can get it in our rear view mirror, as whichever is up to the board. On that, on that, on that issue with the, with the liability insurance, the way I understood it, the school is willing to let us use the building, all they're asking is that the different individual groups that use it have liability insurance. I don't think that's out, out of hand, and I, 300 bucks, they can raise that with their fundraisers that they have. Yeah. Well, they, sell, they sell t shirts for 30 bucks and stuff. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that, but I think we took that off the table because there was two private parties that agreed to donate. Money towards the liability insurance. Mm -hmm. and can, we, can, we, can we remove that off the? Yeah, it was removed last month. That wasn't one of the negotiation things. So the two negotiation things that the school presented were the state statute, and they wanted the omission of the MOU. And then Matt wants to discuss the possibility of an easement and/or a right of way. I don't know what the proper term is. So that in the future, if the need presents itself, we can build sidewalks. I, I, I will let this in. So, the, um, there are two issues, as you mentioned. The first one was um, to include the, the 22, which really addresses that we're a public entity and we also have to follow those guidelines. But I don't, um, we also have to follow the, the town. Um, and that the easement or right of way would fall under that under the town guidelines. So I don't think that there would be a conflict there. Just something we've got to put in writing. Right. And then, as um, uh, Mr. Cisneros said, and I didn't hear this clearly at the last meeting, but I'm glad to hear it tonight, that, that um, the, petition, the um, MOU for usage would be removed from the petition. Yeah. That, that was your request. And it was my request. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that you that you addressed that and that it will be removed. So at this point, I think that um, my attorney was in depositions today, but she said she would call you tomorrow, Mr. Hobbs. She said she'd call me tomorrow. Yes, yeah, she and, called me this morning. So. Oh, shoot, super. Mm -hmm. So the, the two items that, and I did, I did um, send an update to the board regarding the sidewalk. Uh, I think expressed to you in our communication. Uh, we look forward to sidewalk. Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> our kids are walking down the middle of the road to get to school, and we, I mean, we want safe passage for children. So yeah, we would uh, welcome any sidewalk that you would uh, decide to put in. And so, and then, so the other, only other item is that you include the portion where we are a public entity. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? 
I'm going to close the public hearing at 6.05, <coughs> and um, we'll further discussion. So, Matt may correct me on this, but I understand there are three options in front of us. Vote, yay or nay. Wait for uh, Matt and the school's attorney to have a <coughs> meaningful conversation, hammer out the details, and then vote either at a special meeting or in January, that's option two. Or option three, we vote to approve or not approve, contingent upon uh, the agreements that we've all spoken about, the statutory two, the MOU, and now the right of way for the potential for sidewalks being hammered out at the end of the day. That's option three. Do you think we ought to wait till a different meeting, or do you think we should yeah. we can go ahead and vote? I think it's probably better to iron out these details for both parties before before you vote on it. Um, that'd be my recommendation. Is just table it, and, um, <coughs> you know. So then, as part of the discussion, if if I make the motion to table later on, then we we can make that the way to go. Are we open to a special meeting, or do we want to just address it in January? Just to just address it. So I just want to take the tenor of the board on that. Um, I will entertain a motion to take council's advice and table the vote on resolution R18-11, the annexation of South Island School District property into the town of Los Angeles until a January 2019 regular vote meeting. Motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. All right, moving along. Uh, Mr. Cordova, are you speaking, or your daughter speaking, or shall we just move ahead silently? <laughs> well, I've got a couple of things I Please do that. Um, I kind of messed this up the last time I was here, and I'm going to try not to mess it up again. <laughs> um, we're trying to, uh, we want to petition the town to annex into, into the town. And I need to point out one important thing here. We want to do this in two parcels. I want to do the whole 15 acres, the 15 and a half acres, whatever it is, there south of the Salasad building. Uh, one of the parcels, of course, is you know, we want to put in a service station, truck stop kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> but we, we have a, a couple of things going on that uh, are of uh, great concern to me. Number one is the, the easement into the property itself. <clears throat> we've been working with CDOT, we've got a permit with CDOT, uh, we need to do the final engineering on there and hopefully get approval from there so that we can continue with that phase of the, of the project. <clears throat> However, it's a very pricey Project, uh, in regards to the to the road situation, <clears throat> and one of our questions, I guess, to the town is that if we get annexed into the town, does this issue with the uh, with the easement, the turning lanes, and all this stuff and whatever become part of of, of the town? Or are we still going to be responsible to take care of that? The reason I ask that is because <clears throat> it, uh, it's going to require some help to get this thing done. You know, I can, uh, of course, I'll pay for the station and all the stuff and go on there. <clears throat> but, um, you know, we feel we need some help with the, with, with the road construction, the easements and stuff that are on there. And if we, if we annex into the town, if you accept us, well, would it become a town? Uh, you know, uh, issue or, or <coughs> do I have to do that or, or, or how can we handle that? I have one quick question. So I looked at the plat map that you uh, submitted. Thank you for that, Michael. Thank you. And, um, it looked like it's approximately one half of the 15 acres that you want to annex in at this time. Is that correct? Both. 
I want to do both. I just want to do them separate for, 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 uh... <clears throat> but right now it's just the one that's adjacent to San Antonio Street, correct? Yes, the, yeah, but the whole track. Yeah. In two parts. Mm -hmm. So then, um, so that, that, that answers my question, because if the other one isn't part of the town, because I think the entrance that you propose is the, is the second part of the annexation, correct? Mm -hmm. So part one is the one that is in the plat map, and it's closer to San Antonio Street. And then part two of your annexation is where you would propose that the entrance from 285 would be, correct? No, part one is, no. Part one is off of 285 and off San Antonio Street. The second part is further to the east of the, of the property. To the east, got the it. East, yeah. Understood. But Understood. you you want to annex them in both at the same time. Yes. You just want two separate parts, I want two so separate you want to subdivide that the, property. The reason I'm uh, requesting two separate parcels is for I want the, the, the service station uh, to ride on one parcel for legal matters and, and, and then the other one for, for the other part of any future business that we do on the west side. But we, we're, we're requesting annexation on the whole Understood. 15 acres. I, don't know I saw that bold line around just half of it, so I thought you were doing it in two different transactions. Yeah. I misunderstood. Uh, CDOT did request <clears throat> that we move the, the, the site to the south side of the property to allow more room for for the turning lanes and all of that going into from San Antonio Street. So therefore, all the engineering that we had done at the beginning there was tossed out the window. I still pay for it though, and I still have to, and then I have to move the building south and try to get started all over again. <clears throat> so you know, it just that, that, that we kind of need to go. No, uh, I'd like to know. What we can do to address this thing with the road before we even go any further. Well, I don't uh, think we, we want. We we we'd like to. Excuse me. I, I'd like right. to. Uh, you know, request help in. You know, we talked about getting grants and stuff and whatever. But my 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 point is, <clears throat> once we annex in there, is it handed over to you to to, to take care of it, as, like the town, or do we still actively continue doing this? In other words, what you're asking is, is, is the town going to um, deal with CDOT or, or, or do you still have to? Is that what you're asking? Or is it to maintain the road? What, what CDOT is requesting is that there's already an existing problem at the intersection of 17 and 285. That already came up on the studies and everything. Uh, however, CDOT holds the position that anybody that wants to do anything in the vicinity is responsible to fix that problem. So the problem is there, and they're requesting me to fix that. Yeah. So then, okay. And then going south, uh, well, obviously we need turning lanes, you know, to, to for the safety of, of everything. Uh, that's one of the reasons we moved the 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 access point to the to the site further south. Why well, not? Here's what I do know. If you're part of the town, then the town can apply for energy impact funds to, you know, for rural economic development, which your station would bring, right? And then we might be able to put that towards the entrance, which you have outlined, right? Just to the south. Um, if you're part of the town, obviously you have leverage, and this board and this body can help you with negotiations. I don't know that. The responsibility transfers solely to us, but we would definitely be partners in it. No, that's not what I mean. Fine. I'm, 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 I'm. <clears throat> I guess, in order for me to go forward, in order for me to go forward, I need, I need a couple of things. I need, you know, the approval of the annexation, number one. <clears throat> number two is, and not necessarily in that order, I guess, is to resolve doing the easement, doing, doing, doing the construction on the road so that we can access the site. They gotta go hand in hand. Sure. If one of them doesn't work, the other one's not gonna work either. And <clears throat> I guess where we stand right now is that if we decide that we wanna go forward with this, 
I need to pay for, for, for you know, for all the, the, the work on the road. And if, and if we're annexed in, you're saying that the town could possibly get grants and stuff to take care of these costs and whatever for us if we paid this money back so that you can go forward? I mean... I don't know that they pay you back guaranteed. necessarily, but definitely to cover some of the costs to make those roads more accessible to the traffic that you're anticipating. The whole point of this, the grant that I'm thinking of is to the Department of Local Affairs. There may be others, right? And they're about economic development. And a lot of those grants go towards roads because it brings more economical viability into communities. And so that would be the one I was thinking of. But they only meet twice a year. They award, you know, X number of dollars. <coughs> it's like 180 applicants last time around. So there's no guarantee we get it, right? Uh, I'd hate for you to stick around and wait for us to see how that grant comes around. But if, uh, if we're working as a, as a group and you're annexed in, it's my impression, and I'm not trying to speak for the entire board, but we're all in favor of your station, and that we will do our utmost to make sure that it's a successful transition into the town of Montevito, that the business is open and ready and accessible to as many people as possible. And I think we'll work to that end. And that's the tenor I've gotten from the board when it's come up in the past. Um, short of taking an official vote, which I can't do, you know, but I, I know, just from speaking to everybody individually, that we are 110% behind your business and willing to work to make it happen. Whatever resources we can put towards that end, we're, I know that I'm willing to do that work. Okay, what about the... Well, I guess it pretty much ends up in the same thing. I was going to say uh, the, the thing on, Sonia, on San Antonio Street. Yeah. What CDOT ended up doing is they ended up giving me uh, the permits, two separate permits, one to work on the main road in the Bed and one for San Antonio Street. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you're going to need, I believe, a permit to upgrade San Antonio Street? Yes. So you could use that permit itself right there. We don't need to grab a second one or whatever. We could use that one there. And when you and I spoke uh, individually, whenever it was last, I think Zenaida was with us as well, uh, you had indicated that parallel to 285 there was a tract of land that was part of the town of Montanito or that's that's what we that, that that's what I believe because we saw I had seen that on a map somewhere after speaking with um, uh, you and I called it a frontage road. Frontage road. Martin Reynolds. He says he believes that that is actually part of the state highway department. Is that correct? The the frontage road ends on San Antonio Street and goes all the way through the entrance to the narrow gauge. Uh, People. It's only on this side. Correct, yeah. yeah. See, it's town. only on this side because so the, other part, the, town yeah, the other part would have been in, in the town. In the, in yeah, the because town. that was one of the things we were thinking maybe just widening San Antonio. Remember, we spoke about widening San Antonio <coughs> and using that tract of land to make a roundabout so we yeah. not even use the entrance further yeah. to the side. I think, I think that, you know, uh, we, we've kind of gone back and forth with the engineer on that, and one of the issues that we see there is that the turn. Uh, would be a little too sharp for multi-axle trailers and stuff and whatever. Even if we widened it, and made it. Yeah, still, I, I think it'd be uh, it'd be it'd be challenging, and I think that 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 in itself would take away from truckers trying to come in. <clears throat> but you need more than anything else for 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 you know like what we're trying to build there is easy in, easy out. Okay. We, need, we need to do that, and that's the reason we're proposing the other one further down there. <coughs> okay, so so if, if, if we set that aside, how how would we know? How long will, will it take for us to know if we are going to be annexed into the town? I would imagine the February meeting at the latest. It's usually about a two to three month process. The person to ask is sitting right over there. She's going to tell you it takes six months, but uh, once all the paperwork's in order, it's about a two to three month. So this petition that she submitted tonight and the plat that she submitted tonight would move forward, would have a public hearing, uh, would have to notify your neighbors, uh, or is that just like, like Flannix? 
Yeah, just, just the flag flags. Just the flag flags. Yeah. Can I ask so, you a question? Yes, sir. What, what CDOT requests can you do for 17 and 285, the intersection there? Uh, uh, a turning lane, for one, going west. They want a turning lane. Then they want for us to uh, widen just on the other side of, uh, of uh, the intersection there, there's some guardrails and some signs that kind of seem like they come up into the road. We need to move those off the way, move them further back, so that it opens the, the whole corridor more to the, to the west. So there's got to be a turning radius there, I mean a, a turning lane going south. <clears throat> the one coming from the, from the west, we believe, is sufficient. We don't know until we actually meet with them. From our uh, preliminary drawings and, and sketches that we've done, you know, for 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 trying to acquire the permit, uh, it, it it was okay at that point in time. Well, basically, there. I mean, I know it's not necessarily legal, uh, but there already is a de facto turning lane there, right? People that turn left, everybody that's going towards Las Mesitas and Cañon, they just go around on the side and then they merge <coughs> back in. Would it be something as simple as removing those guardrails and doing some new stripes? That's, yeah, that's part of what we need to do there. We need to move all those guardrails further to the north, but they want a turning lane. So that would be just some painting, right? That's what I'm hoping. No, that, those guardrails protect the EMS board. That's right there on 3517. I'm, I'm not sure why they're making Mr. Cordova even deal with that junction there when he's over a thousand feet from, from that intersection. We've had numerous discussions on that. Like, why do I need to do all of this? There's, you know, like all the distances that are there, they're grandfathered in. Yet they're going to be able to utilize everything that they're asking the core of us to put out there. Yeah. You're shouldering the load of everybody because you want to innovate and put a new business. Well, I, 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 you know, the whole thing is that, that in order to, to, to be comfortable, Safety is going to be the number one thing there with trucks and everybody coming and going and whatever. And <clears throat> I'm willing to do whatever my chair is with, without blinking an eye. It's just that some of the, the, the stuff that they're requiring is kind of like, well, you know that that problem is there, but their policy states that, you know, that whoever needs to do stuff like that is the one going to be responsible for it. And therefore, you know, we kind of figured, well, you know, if we're going to go forward with this thing, it's something we can't, you know, we're not going to go out there and try to change policy, you know, it's a waste of time. Well, I think once you're in the town, uh, I don't foresee any hiccups to that, but it, once you're as part of the town, uh, I know that this body has a little bit more pull, no offense to the court of us, to get those things No, I don't. I mean, yeah. well, we just need to get as many people as <coughs> possible is all I'm saying. We just need, you know... And I, I think we're willing to exert that pressure as a board okay. to make sure that this project happens. Okay. So at this point in time, I guess we just wait for, for annexation? Yeah, we need to approve his petition. Uh, are, are you... Are, I guess, are you... wanting to move forward with the annexation with the understanding that we don't really know what... Is going to be worked out with, between CDOT on this issue and you and us? I guess that's... We know what CDOT wants. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing with, with, with the annexation is if, if, if that cost becomes prohibitive, prohibitive in, in, in what we're trying to do up there, uh, well then, I don't know that that we would really need to annex into the town because maybe our, our, our plans need to change. That's why I'm asking you know, the question. So, so, so it, it, it's really like a no no no, no offense, but it's like the Catch yeah. Twenty Two thing because you know I I, I kind of don't know. Um, we know what the requirements are. But, you know, pretty much, basically, we, we, we think we know what they want, and therefore, I think I'm ready to to go forward, you know, if we get annexed into the town. 
And, and whatever happens out there on that uh, thing is, is something that, that if I feel I can't do later on, I'll just have to put this staging thing on the back burner till you know, a later date or whatever. I just, I, I, I just wanted to put everything together so that I can go forward with it. To me, I think it's, it's not ideal. But I think worst case scenario, at least in the interim, we widen San Antonio, People utilize that as best they can for the time being while we work on this other issue with CDOT. And then we add that entrance post-construction. That would be my worst case scenario for how this would work with your annexation. Which, which entrance? The one on the south side? So they would use San Antonio as, as an entrance and then they'd do sort of a roundabout to pull into the pumps and then they would also exit on San Antonio. But, so it wouldn't be an immediate turn into the station. They'd come in on San Antonio, they would go down for what, 60, 70 yards, they would turn roundabout and they would exit closest to 285. And then that's something that we could work on in the interim. And then while we're doing all the bureaucracy stuff with uh, CDOT, you could be working on your construction, you could be making some money, seeing how the traffic flows with that particular plan. Maybe we don't need that other entrance. Maybe it's absolutely positively true we need it and we still we're working on it. I think working on the C dot entrance may be necessary, but I don't think that's the deal breaker. I would hope not anyway. I think that we could utilize San Antonio Street, at least in the interim, see how traffic works, and then work on getting your access on 285 further south. Then would it be safe for me to say that the the if C dot, and if I recall, um, Martin said that the, the 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 permits that they're issuing can write on their own. So that being the case, would it be safe for me to to say that that you will go ahead and use that permit to 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 upgrade San Antonio Street? <clears throat> I think that's something we all want. Okay. It's not a discussion or a voting item tonight, but I think it's safe to say that, yes, but I can't officially no, say No, I understand that. I mean, just but if it was an action item to widen San Antonio Street to make access to your business more accessible, my guess, I can't vote for the board, obviously, to speak for them, my guess is that we would vote for it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Cordova, one of the things that the, the way the town may be able to help with the south access is if you dedicate so much a strip of property there for a street. And you know, we could name it Cordova Lane, and then when it comes back out to San Antonio Street, call Cordova Boulevard. Then we could apply for a ramp grant to CDOT, and that might be able to cover the, the cost of that access right there. That's, that's a possibility. We'll do whatever yeah. it takes to make it happen because it's something our community needs yeah. and it's good for our community. <clears throat> on, our, on that plat that we that we that came by, we have uh, I guess, uh, uh, designated access for the utilities. Right. However, that one does not match up with the entrance that needs to come into the station because the the entrance for the station. We want to set it up where the trucks will be able to drive straight into the canopy underneath the fueling station. I don't know if that would create a problem. As far as putting an easement through there, I don't have an issue with any stuff like that. I, I think the only way we'd, we'd be able to apply for a grant on that if there was a street there. So you might have to move it further to the south. We can't go further south anymore. Can't. We went as far as, as well, we hit Mr. Uh, the, hills. the Hills property. Was we started on this side and we're over there already. We can't, you know. Because all we need is 24 feet, roughly, maybe 30 feet. And that would just be on the mm -hmm. south side, uh, up against the. Yeah, fence. and then it come out to back to San Antonio Street. We, we, you know, we, we yeah, I think we can do that. I think we can do that. I 
<laughs> you have my promise that I'm going to help. Okay, therefore we, we want to petition to, to go into, into the town, I guess. Well, I think you can start the process, right? You know, there's, it seems like there are a lot of details on our now. It would be helpful for everyone to sit down outside this sort of setting to, you know, because it's you know, probably an hour long at least conversation. Okay. Right. Sort of out what's happening because I'm still a little confused myself. You know, obviously, more than I do because you want more involved. But. Or we can accept his annexation petition tonight. You can start the process. Sure, there's no harm doing that. I will entertain a motion to accept the Fred Cordova petition for annexation to survey into the Antonito, town of Antonito as Antonito Field. So, so I, I drafted a resolution there, which is the way to kind of start the process. Um, so it would be a motion to approve the resolution. Um, um, trying to find it. So anyway, it's, it's, it's be talking resolution. Um, <coughs> for the annexation of Antonia Fields and, and setting a public hearing. And I, I, you know, February sounds ambitious to me to set a public hearing on this given this discussion tonight. So set it for February, but it sounds like there's a lot of log moving parts. We've got a lot of stuff in place already, too. It's just kind of how we're going to work that access. That's the main sticking point. Well, like I was saying, you know, put comes to shove, we'll consider doing everything on our own. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's uh, just a consideration. We're not, you know, it, must, it might get to the point where, yeah. where we can go forward. Because it is a, a, you know, a big project to do all that stuff on the road. Yeah. I like the idea yeah. of a street to well, like, um, so, the motion would be amended then, I will petition, petition, I will solicit a, a motion to approve the resolution as presented for the annexation of Antonito Fuels as presented by the Fred Court of a Petition. So we're on to the next step then, and hopefully by February we can have a public hearing. And uh, you and I would need to talk to you before the January meeting. So. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're on to 8D, the approval of the IGA for Cranes County the intergovernmental agreement for paving of streets. Um, I think we're kind of one and the same. I don't know what why they're both. Okay. But um. So the IGA was drafted by the county attorney and by our council, and this has to do with the wastewater project. Uh, the IGA, in a nutshell, states the following. Antonito will provide fuel, asphalt, and additional crew members as needed, and we will pay the salary of the county employees to lay down three inches of asphalt for 4,800 linear feet in the town of Antonito at the conclusion of the wastewater project. And they will provide the laydown machine and the manpower uh, to take about four days, maybe five, to do that. <coughs> um, the money is in our budget, which we just approved for the capital improvement to pay for the fuel, the asphalt, etc. I think that's a fair summation of the IGA. I might have missed something. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, I talked with um, Nick called me actually when I was driving down here tonight. He, he said he's kind of wordsmithing a little, um, but the material terms and conditions are, are, are the same. Um, he wants to make it clear that the, the town is going to be responsible for all the prep work. 
Um, the construction and, people will probably do that. Yeah. Right across it. And that the and that the county will provide um, equipment that it has available at the time. Um, I'm assuming they're still going to have this lay-down machine in two years. Yeah, they said lay-down machine, four, at least four dual axle uh, dump trucks, mm -hmm. and 12 employees is what the IJ said. Um, nine employees, three supervisors, if I remember correctly. And then any additional employees that will be required, the town would supply. Um, in addition, the IGA said that uh, we wouldn't have to pay insurance or benefits uh, because there are already county employees and the county would just absorb those costs as part of their regular salary. So we're just reimbursing the county for their hourly wage essentially. If that makes any sense. Is that accurate? Yeah. So I, I would just, you know, ask the board to with the, that sort of framework of the material terms and conditions of the IGA to give you know the mayor authority to, to finalize this thing because um, it's going to be a, there's going to be some more spending uh, and Nick said he'd give me a copy tomorrow so I think and then he can bring it to the next commissioner meeting um, I don't know maybe again but it's soon um, and hopefully have this wrapped up here next week. Any questions or concerns? So, I guess the motion, I will entertain a motion to approve the IGA once amended, granting me the authority to finalize the IGA with Columbus County for paving the streets uh, at the conclusion of our wastewater project. Moving on, uh, Wade? Uh, <coughs> housing has a request uh, um, to our PD. If there's uh, uh, any contacts made on any of their properties with any of the tenants, that they'd be made aware of that in case uh, there's a situation where they need to take some kind of action as per their residence and whatnot. I don't know, I guess it was a courtesy that was done uh, by previous chiefs. And I, I don't know if you guys are doing that now with them or... or I don't think we've had any issues with anybody. That That's what I asked too. Was, was, has there been any problems? You have uh, reported to them. Uh, 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 okay. Just a request. Oh. So, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that. Okay, thank you. That's it. Cool. All right, we're on to 9C, uh, discussion action on approval of the October 18 reports and AAP. Any questions on the reports we received last? <coughs> I will entertain a motion to approve the October 18 reports as presented. Discussion action acknowledgement of receipt of financial statements of November 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We have Rossi's report. Any questions on his report? You want to tell us about the truck? <coughs> the uh, two prices we got for uh, solid, waste, solid waste truck range from 100. $35,000 to $160,000 for a brand new one. And at the budget meeting, we discussed the single axle versus the tandem. Um, most of the single axle, axle uh, are fitted with the DEF system. And as anybody who deals with diesel knows, are troublesome. So I think we're looking more towards the uh, uh, tandem instead of single axle. Is that the 160 then? Yeah, roughly. We have a salesman from Elliott uh, equipment coming down next week um, to see what price he can get us uh, locally. I should go from in state. So the discussion action is to move forward with shopping or approving purchase of? Well, we can't approve them to you in cost. Of yeah. yeah, so just move forward with investigating further? Yes. 
Any questions on the solid waste truck? Yeah, carry on. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to have Administrator Duran uh, talk to Elliott Equipment and any other eligible uh, retailers uh, in looking into the purchase of a dual axle solid waste truck for the town of Anthony. So, uh, I don't know exactly how much time Rossi and Stephanie have accumulated. I can guess that Rossi's is upwards of 100 days, just because it has been always. Uh, and it's one of those things where we've, in the past, bought the vacation time back. I think it was, you remember, Scott, or wait, was it $25 a day? Uh, was it $30 a day? Um, and so the discussion on D2 is whether or not to buy back the vacation, unused vacation time for Crook Trujillo and Administrator Duran. Uh, do you have a specific number of days? 80 hours it says. Is that for both of you or is that just Rossi? Or? No, that would be for both of us. Um, 80 hours each? Yes. So, uh, I don't know what Rossi's comments are, but personally, I, um, I always prefer to use mine. But just with the move here and the different projects that we have this year, um, if we don't use them, we can only carry um, 160 over on the books, and we lose them. This year, every year I've always lost a few, not a big deal, but this year I think I would probably lose about 90 if we don't. I just don't, we're near the end of the month, and still a lot to be completed. We've got those bones out, so. Um, this is the world, but you all know I don't encourage it, and I never have, but it's either that or the gift. What do you guys have off that? 160. 160. Yeah. And last season's way more than I think last season. Still younger, fighting back that age when we. Two vacation days this year, that's the reason it's snowing. Right. <laughs> I think he took two. I think he took two. Um, so it doesn't happen very often. No, this will be the second time we've done it, and at least in my tenure. Her. We, we did, Stephanie always uses hers, but she didn't this year. Actually, everybody uses their vacation except for Rossi. This is the first time Stephanie has it. It's called a dedicated employee. It's you were doing it. You were doing it. <laughs> so, um, the discussion would have to be how much per day. I think it was $25 per day last time, I think. Uh, we can look at the minutes and we can say, hey, this is what we did last time. We're based on the last one. We can make a new proposal. Um, when was the last one? Like three years ago? Or mm -hmm. Four years ago? It, I was mayor, but that was early in my first term. Yeah, about four or five years ago. <laughs> That's why I don't remember it now. I don't remember how much we gave him. Yeah. 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 That, that's another thing we can just discuss how much we'll, if, if we want to move forward, how much per day. Yes. Yeah, we've been marketed out. Uh, we, we did have to order some backups. So 
Is that why you're out there at 11 o'clock on Sunday? <coughs> 11 o'clock at night, mind you. I was coming back from Alamos or something, and there goes Rossi to the, it was like 11 o'clock at night, I figured something had happened. That's what it was. All right, then, uh, Chief, you're up. We all got Chief Kapos' report. Any questions about the report? I know there was a shot fired call in there, and I thought you knew one question, so I put it there. I that was one of the dogs that I got shot on that one. On Who did the shooting? Um, there was the people that were in the apartments, and I know Officer Montoya was working that case, so. Okay. So it was, a, it was a private citizen that shot somebody's dog? Yes. So, I know he's, uh, he's working it right now. He hasn't told me the charges have been filed or anything yet. I know he's working on trying to interview him and everything. What were the circumstances for that? Was it dog vicious or? Mm -hmm. I guess they told him that they thought that dog was going to attack him, so. But I don't know if he got to interview everybody at the residence yet or what's going on. I haven't seen the charges yet, so I don't think he's filed charges yet. And he went downstairs now, so. Yeah. But, um, we do have the vicious dog ordinance, which we passed, what, like six months ago? So, um, I, I, if somebody has thought they were in danger and they needed to shoot a dog, then I guess that's yet to be determined and it's an ongoing investigation, so we no. probably shouldn't discuss it too much. Ongoing, so. But, I mean, uh, just to advise residents that that ordinance exists, right, that we could remove the dog because of the ordinance, and they don't have to take the law into their own hands. Yeah. That would be something to make them aware of should it happen again, they can spread the word to somebody else. Because okay. that ordinance is in place and for that very reason. Right? Yeah. So if a person feels like they're being threatened by this dog, we can do something like that? Mm. So we did the past year, but were you on board when we passed around the vicious stuff here? So I think it's just one offense and the dog can be removed. Uh, yeah. That's the way we there's a way from this probably take it to some ways or something like that. Yeah. Let's get the dog out of here, so well, that the shelter or the shelter. We have the, we, I don't think we took any animals out of this year in the past or had an agreement with the shelter over for strays. Still getting complaints about strays. Uh, yeah. One in particular, uh, I guess there was a dog fight a day or two ago, and I think there was an officer response to that. I, I believe Officer Cortez. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Is it Cortez? Cortez, rather. Oh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Just, just wanted to mention that. If I hear ten things, I'd say seven of them are about dogs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I know we need, we need to figure out a way to transport dogs. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a trailer now. We have a trailer. Yeah. Truck. And it has a, a canopy which goes over the top. Okay. And we have kennels. Okay. That's right. So we already have kennels. Oh, well, we have. The reason we couldn't transport them in the past is because, well, you know this, yeah. right? Just, we can't put them in the police vehicles in case somebody's allergic to pet them. Yeah, I love also got in that big old lawsuit and everything because of that, because somebody was allergic to, to dogs and stuff. So we have to transport them in a non p vehicle. But now that we have the trailer and we have the kennels already, that's a potential way to move them to the kill, no kill shelter, excuse me. But who would do that? I mean, who's responsible for well, we. Uh, about four months ago, you recall, there was a split vote, but we voted for an enforcement, a code enforcement officer. And it apparently fell on deaf ears. And it <coughs> out. Now you and I voted for it. I think it was four or two or whatever the vote was. But um, I think that's something we need to consider. And maybe even advertise it for that code enforcement officer, even if it's part-time. Put it part-time for somebody to so, uh, and it's already on the books, we already voted on it, so I think that would make it, uh, wouldn't take PD's time for having to go off to San Luis, it wouldn't take our 
already diminished crew time from doing the work here in town? Because it's still a lot of work. Yeah. The other thing is take more because they're, they're busy all the time. Mm -hmm. And all the vehicles that are parked next to the road that were usually brought up. Oh yeah, last month for street sweeping. So I think the, I think we're right for that. Well, we're going to invite the, the, the vehicles. I know I got rid of the van over there in Main Street, and they'll put everything in the back. But yeah. that would be some code enforcement because you guys can give out these notices. And stuff. Yeah, so please do uh, post it, and then we'll form a hiring committee. Okay. If it's part time, then we can maybe uh, relegate it to the administrator. But if it's going to be a full time position, that's something we need to determine. Okay. So how do you want to put in the admin? Just part-time for now then? Uh, <coughs> I think we approved him full-time, him or her full-time. That's the way we did it. Uh, but uh, is it a full-time job? That's the question I'm asking. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always very back in time. Doing the yard stuff, taking care of the junk, weed ordinances. Park cars. Park car ordinances. Yeah, so I would, I would put it in as, as a full-time position. I think that's what we approved. So confirm with Stephanie and check the minutes, but I'm pretty sure that's what we approved. Okay. For the code enforcement officer? No, that's fine. I don't know how many months ago, but we approved the code enforcement officer. Um, and just to confirm with you whether we approved it as part time or full time. Well, actually, that's what you wanted, but the board agreed that they wanted a third officer for the reasons. And that third officer was supposed to be responsible for code enforcement. Or a, a summary of the case. Well, that's where we need to look at the minutes, because the way I remember was a third officer and a code enforcement officer. That's Either way, we need to have somebody take yeah. care of the codes. Could you have yeah. Well, so confer with her, let's jive on the minutes, and then we'll go from there. Okay. And the reason we haven't taken any of there is because they've been busy, we're busy. They don't have enough property. Let somebody go take the dogs and stuff. So. Yeah. No, it's tough. I, 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 it's a long way to go, so at least two. Oh, yeah. So. Any other questions or comments for Chief? Thank you. All right. Stay safe. Thank you. Uh, we're on to discussion action on the purchase of a police unit with invoice for such. Was that in your report, too, Chief? The invoice? For the police unit? Invoice wasn't there, it should have still been. The release one? Same one? Yeah. Any discussion on that? Uh, they don't have anything in them. Yeah. Please, just for the inmate behind the passenger. Do you hear this, Chief? No. So, clerk says she needed to be uh, present an actual specific cost, a specific vehicle lease term. So, you've kind of given us the broad picture, but that's the one we agreed on. We're going to go with the lease purchase of one vehicle. So, yeah. she wants you to find out what the specific costs are. Um, okay. Well, we're going to go with the, I thought we were going to go with the Durango. But she just needs you to say, hey, one Durango, this is what it's going to cost us. Just send over that lease purchase because I think there options on the email. Just, yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. So. Which specific option package is that? Separate it from the email or just here's the box and send them to me, whatever. Okay. So then I'm not having to do all the women. Alright, I'll send you everything. It's the Durango, right? Yeah. I think that's what we wrote it on, it was a four wheel drive. And yeah. okay. Just as long as you get her specific numbers so that she can start. Okay, I'll send you. And sending tax ID numbers or tax exempt numbers to the dealership, etc. Okay. Is that accurate? Uh, yes. The guy was supposed to come, uh, have the finance company give me a call and then I was going to give all the information to her. Yeah, so, so let's proceed call. with that. And then uh, I will entertain a motion to table this until the January meeting to such time as the sales rep can get us a very specific invoice for a clerk to give a little copy. Is that okay? Okay. Motion. Motion to table. 
Is there a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. All right. On the map, uh, you hear back from Big Truck? No. Um, yes, it says, I think I sent it to all you guys. I filed a copy of the complaint in federal court. Um, Big Truck and kind of star and Big Truck rental. These cases have a way of winding on slowly for years. Uh, yeah, they don't want to pay, so, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it'll be a long, drawn out there for sure. Uh, but yeah, I haven't heard back from them. They have they have 30 days according to that notice I sent them to accept the waiver of, of service process. Um, usually people accept those waivers because it, it, it gives them additional time to file an answer. Um, now the star was served today or yesterday. I didn't even send them a waiver, so they were served. Um, which means they'll have to answer within 30 days or something. Um, well, maybe I'll talk to you, Rossi, after. It sounds like you got some buying a new trash truck. Huh? Yeah, okay. Um, and then um, there's a House Bill 18 1128 that was passed last year that requires covered entities, which is a lot of people, you know, you know, one of these to protect them. Um, personally identifiable information, so things like social, if, you, if you're collecting social security numbers, driver's license, if you're taking credit card payments and have, have that stuff on file. And I, I, I don't know if the town has any of that information on file, but if, if we do, we have to adopt a policy in terms of how it's going to be handled, how it's going to be destroyed, how there would be notification to the, the consumer if there was a breach of the data. So, is there, do, do we use credit cards or anything like that? Do, you, do we ever collect like a driver's license or social security number? All right, so we probably might not have to adopt a policy. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you the statute and you can look through exactly what so it all says. Hypothetically now, um, one of the things I'm trying to make happen sooner than later hopefully, is uh, Town Hall to the website. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember who it was, but somebody had floated the idea of accepting online payments, but through a third party, like let's just say PayPal, because that's mm -hmm. what I know. Would PayPal have to? Adopt the policy? No, or will we have to adopt. No, that's, that's covered in the House bill too. When you're using third-party vendors, <coughs> that type of stuff. Yeah, we still have to adopt the policy. It's it's not that onerous, I don't think. Um, that was my next question. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't let that dissuade you from. Yeah. And I don't know if that's that. even going to be a viable option, but the web designers I've been talking to have said, well, yeah, we could definitely connect you to have all these third-party uh, payment options people to pay traffic tickets on. Yeah, I mean, one of us has one for their clear water and sewer right now. Which, you, know, you can set up auto payments, and um, it's pretty common. Okay. Anything else, Smith? That's all I have. Did you want to see us in the executive session? If the board feels the need to have one, I mean, I don't, I don't see the need. He had, he had asked if we wanted to uh, go into executive session to discuss the annexation and the negotiations therein. The annexation was South Canal. Uh, but I don't know if we need one. It's up to you guys. He's giving us the option to close that run. <laughs> All right. Anything else then? That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, I just have a couple of quick announcements and then I promise to adjourn. I am traveling to. Denver, probably, not probably, I'm leaving Sunday evening for a meeting with Colorado Department of Health on Monday in regard to the CFC. And so we have an agenda item with them, uh, several agenda items, mostly just on their delays and the way that they're taking forever to get information back to us. Uh, our preliminary design report was submitted to them in 2017. It was approved yesterday. 
So that's how long they had it. Uh, uh, the PNA, I think it was a PNA. Uh, we submitted that in September of uh, 17, and that one was approved about two months ago. So all these COC dates that we're having to meet are contingent upon them getting their work done, that they're taking seven or eight months to get us feedback. And then they give us the feedback, and we only have two or three weeks to meet the deadlines. So I'm going to go up there to renegotiate the COC, see if I can get them to rescind the $900 fine, which is their fault, by the way, because they took over a year to get us the information back. So uh, if you need me to add anything to the agenda with uh, them, our water attorney will be there, their attorney will be there, and three representatives from the Department of Health will be there. Uh, our engineer will also be there. If you need me to add anything to talk, just let me know. I'll bring it up. Um, and then I kind of already alluded to the other one. Um, I only heard back from three of the board members whether you prefer .gov or .org. Um, it kind of seems like a, a slam dunk for .org because it's presumably cheaper. But um, I don't know if having a .gov and that extra $400 a month protects us in any way. Once I know more, I'll let you know. Uh, that might influence us how we do if you looked at um, DOLA has, I've noticed some of small towns especially have websites under DOLA now. So that's essentially, you know, probably some sort of form set up that DOLA allows you know, people to have websites under something like that. So I was told that I would have two proposals for you by tonight. That didn't happen, so I'm guessing I'll have them, I'll have them to you by the January meeting. I'll look into the DOLA one in the interim. So maybe we'll have three to look at. Uh, right now, no cost to us. I would like your permission. It's not an action item, I realize that. But I would like to just lock in three domain names. Townofoncomito.gov, townofoncomito.org, and townofoncomito.us. And then we'll find out which one we can uh, best suits our needs and our purposes. And then uh, that way nobody else takes it. Does everybody ever hear that? I'll tell the people to put that in their bid as well. Any other uh, things that I need to let you know, do via email or whatever? That's all I have. Uh, motion to adjourn? Yeah. Nicole? All right. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Okay.